Hiya, and welcome back to Rain Check, the game that teaches us that Rue, you're not made of milk. So why are you Swiss cheese? Anyways, let's just hop right in. Assuming my saves still work, which they should. This was all my fault. Rue is now Cheddar for dinner. No! Day six. Uh, uh, I try to move my legs, but my body protests, refusing to budge. All at once, a dull, blistering pain radiates inside me, jolting me from my slumber. Feels like my body was shattered and poorly put back together. Festin, don't eat Daru. No! It was Festin. A dull pressure lingers on my eyes as I try to take in my surroundings. Some kind of hospital room? There's a bag and some stuff in the corner of the room. Clearly someone else had been here before. Just... What happened to me? Trying to move my arms, a sudden pang of pain shoots through my sides. Shit. A low groan escapes my maw, and that's when my eyes begin to wander down to my body. I look and feel like a fucking mess. I don't know how I'm alive. There are bandages all over my chest, practically suffocating me as I try to breathe, and IVs and wires all over my body. Hang on. Hang on, let me adjust my microphone. I'm never going to be happy with how my microphone is. God damn it. Hang on. Okay, microphone should be good. Yay! And wires all over my body. God. Why can't I remember? My breathing begins to quicken, and as I struggle to recall anything, I was... There was... I mean, how could I have been... Countless reasons flood my mind, but none of them stick. Did I lose a fight? Did I get into an accident? Where do I live? What's my name? That's obvious, it's... My name is... Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I think I figured out what's happening. We're Rue now. And we have amnesia. How fun. My eyes frantically dart across the room, hoping to find anything that can give me a hint. Panic starts to set in, and I can feel my paws begin to feel clammy, sweat forming at my brows. I'm... Fucking hell. What the hell is making that goddamn noise? I glare at the machine next to me, the incessant beeping grating my nerves, taunting me with the readings on the screen. What the hell? All the sounds around me suddenly become magnified, like a low drone ringing through my head. Mm, fucking hell, I need to calm down. I need to find someone for answers. I'll get nowhere like this. Try to call out for help, but it's excruciatingly painful to speak. A sudden surge of pain courses through my chest. There's a faint taste of blood in my mouth. Just how badly am I injured? I shouldn't have tried to speak. I practically choke as I try to subdue a cough, specks of blood scattering across the bed. I frantically gasp for air as I look on the other side of the bed and notice all the machinery. My eyes widen as I realize the severity of the situation. Even more tubes and wires seem to loop around my back and around the bed. Fuck, this is serious, huh? One thing at a time, I lay as still as I possibly can, trying to regain my strength. After what feels like forever, the discomfort finally subsides enough where I'm able to catch my breath and hear my thoughts. Alright, how did I get here? Who am I? What's my fucking name? I grind my teeth, annoyed that I can't even answer a simple question like that. Like that. The more I try to recall, the foggier it gets. Like I'd woken from a long-ass sleep, the dream slowly fading. Fuck this. I'll just wait for a doctor to check in on me. Hopefully I'll be able to get some answers then. And a proper prognosis, too. I'll conserve my strength and rest up for now. Hmm? Perfect timing. Looks like I didn't have to wait long. 
Oh my fucking god. It's Theo! It's the boy! Here comes the boy! The boy! Hello! Welcome! Oh my god, he looks so cute. I just want to squeeze him. I just want to squeeze him. I just want to lift him up and give him a big old hug. And then throw him out the window. I fucking love him. I so bad just want to give him a hug and take him out on a pretty date and make him feel pretty. Truly the best date. Truly the best date. We're gonna, we're gonna go out on a date and we're gonna make him feel pretty. I'm gonna take him out on a date, make him feel pretty, go on a pretty walk through the woods, eat a pretty dinner, take him to a pretty movie. And brutally murder and brutally murder Larry. You know, the standard stuff. He looks so cute. Ah! I just want to squeeze him. Uh, Mr. Developer, why did you make him so squeezable? Why did you make him so squeezable? Why did he have to be the protagonist? Why can't we have a Theo route? Just kidding, it's your story, ignore me. I just want to suck him dry, Dilda. Uh, girl, I just need I need I need to love him. I need him. He is he is checking all the boxes for me. Why did you have to make such a perfect character? <laughs> Anyways, a stocky looking tiger enters the room but stops when he notices me. Judging by how he's reacting, I don't think he suspected me to be awake. Who the hell is this guy though? Definitely not a, definitely not a doctor with the way they're dressed. Rue? Rue? Is this guy talking about me? His voice is coarse and raspy. Wonder what the hell happened with him. Oh my god, Rue, you're awake! The doctors, they had no idea how long you'd be asleep for! He rushes over to my bedside and crouches next to me. You're awake! Really awake! Thank god! I thought I'd never see you again! He buries his head into my into his sleeve and his, as his eyes start to water. Just who is this guy? Considering the situation, he must be incredibly important if he's getting this emotional over me. Better go along with it for now and ask questions later. They said you weren't going to make it. But if you did, they said it could take weeks, even months for you to wake up. I return a small smile as I try and study the tiger, noting the unusual marking on his face. How are you feeling? <laughs> I hope you're not in too much pain. I... I try to speak, but it proves too difficult. I only manage to utter a single word before running out of breath. Please, it's okay. Don't push yourself. Does it hurt to talk? It's best if you don't. The doctor did mention something about lungs. I wince back at the tiger, his eyes pained. He extends his paw, gently gripping mine as he continues to stare at me with concern. It's been a couple of days since the shooting. His eyes glaze and averts his gaze away from me. You must be wondering what happened since then. Shooting? I think I'm starting to form a picture of what happened. Maybe. I use most of my strength and squeeze his paw, trying to get his attention back. Sorry, I got distracted. What is it? I guide his attention with my eyes to the pen and paper across the room, which I had spotted. Oh, right, good thinking. If it's not too difficult for you, maybe you could write down your thoughts instead. He gets up, grabs the item 
buttons and places the pen in my palm. With a weak grip, I grapple with the pen on the soft bedding, but eventually succeed in jotting something down. As expected, the tiger becomes increasingly worried as he studies the paper. Who are you? Ha, what are you? Ah! My heart! My heart! Theo is so baby! He gives out a nervous chuckle but frowns as he studies my serious expression. You're serious. You really don't remember? But... God... Uh... Rue... Does that ring a bell? It's your name. I'm Theodore. You ran into me earlier this week, remember? We met at the Grand Marine. You were asking about Cyprus. Remember? What about my wallet? Without you to return it to me, I still don't know if I'd have still have fit now. I guess you can't remember that either, right? I frowned back. Okay, well, what about ARC? You have to remember that. You told me yourself you've been working there for years now. You're a private investigator working there. You told me yourself and you even gave me this. The tiger rummages through his pockets and pulls out a black business card. His motion's becoming more frantic. Look, this is yours. I stare down and see the words ARC and Rue written across it. I look back and see his eyes pleading at me, hoping any of this is working to jog my memory. But it's not. You were in the middle of an investigation when I met you. I got attacked in the casino by some addict, but you were there to explain it all to me. You don't remember? And there was Javier too. Your investigation partner. I know, right, Lug? I know. Your investigation partner. You work with him on cases. He's a fox much shorter than you. He's smart and helpful and it... He shakes his head in disbelief. Nothing, huh? Please, Rue. You have to remember something, right? <laughs> Nothing at all. I'm sorry you're trying so f hard. It's frustrating me more and more. He turns back away from me and I can see his shoulders def deflate from defeat. <laughs> he scoffs, his paw wiping his face as he stares at the wall. These words are a whisper, but I'm barely able to make it out over the noise of the machines. It's unfair. I, I robbed you of your health. And now I've robbed you of your memories. Why did you have to save someone like me? Me? His words taper off into a low whimper, and in the ensuing moments, time stands still. Why did you have to save someone like me? How impressionable. I'm not sure what exactly I'm feeling right now. Pity, Hi everyone. Regret, I watched the anger. second video of North and Light. It was amazing. You feel sad in the beginning and Aldrich was cute. Smiling face with hearts. And the face one is called that. But I do know one thing. It's that I'm responsible for this tiger's sorrow. Sorry. The single whisper drains most of my strength, leaving me winded again. But it's loud enough to catch the tiger's attention. No. <laughs> Don't be. He suddenly reaches out and grabs my paw, staring at me with resolve. Rue, probably won't remember, but that night, you saved me. And I've been thinking about it a lot. I've been thinking about what I'd do if you never woke up. How I'd never be able to thank you, but thankfully you're awake. And it's clear to me now. He squeezes tightly to the point where it's almost painful. I'm going to figure out who did this to you. I promise you, Rue, if it's the last thing I do. I... I'm sorry, could you give me a moment? Standard anime protagonist. I love it. He steps out of the room, leaving me to dwell on my thoughts. Was he so important that I felt the need to protect him with my life? I can't verify what he's saying, but my gut says he's telling the truth. Why would I risk my life for him if he wasn't important to me? Who was he to me? But the real question is... It's time to drink water. Ah, shit.
It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. shadows crawling back my eyelids please don't leave me like this stay with me till the night and back to the shadow rolling back my eyelids please don't leave me like this stay with me till the night ends okay i'm good now the real question is who was i to him i need to learn more about my situation as soon as i can i need to remember I struggle to keep my eyes open and lay back, giving myself a well-needed break. Fucking hell, I'm so tired. Seconds turn to minutes and I slowly feel myself drift in and out of consciousness. An eternity could pass and I wouldn't even know it. Suddenly a vague but comforting sensation, like a paw resting on my shoulder, emerges and then gradually fades away. You must be exhausted. Please, get some rest. I'll go and get you something to eat. You must be starving. I'll be back. Theodore? He's gone. Shit, I still have more to ask. Look around the room with my attention landing on the machine by my bedside again. This thing earlier, that was beeping. Is this an ECG? Everything looks stable. Normal peaks, cyclic patterns. Wait, how do I know all this? I furrow my brows and a sudden sharp, sharp sting of clarity permeates through me. Fragmented memories of my past suddenly become clear. I went to medical school years ago. I know how this all works. But an investigation firm? How? I never cared about shit like that. Wait. Medical school? There was something... Declan... Why does that name sound familiar? An indistinct image of a tiger, vaguely resembling Theodore, flashes into my mind. The harder I try to focus on it, the more it dissipates into nothingness. Good morning! Theodore, I'm back. You won't believe what I just bought this new phone from. Hey! Oh god, I gave him a ro the wrong voice. How gay do I want Monty to sound? <laughs> How gay do I want him to sound? I accidentally made him sound like a flaming homosexual. <laughs> the gayest. Hey! You're awake! Yo. Where's Theodore? I shoot a look over at the obnoxiously loud boar. Does he also know that tiger? Are we all friends? And what the hell happened to him? Don't look at me like that. It's scary. You know what? I'm going to try to give him a Blitz impression. Fucking hell of a boss. Blitz Brandon Rogers. Don't look at me like that. It's scary. He slowly approaches my bedside and waves a paw in front of me. Hey, man, you feeling okay? Do you need me to, like, get you the doctor? Hey, yo. Not in the mood to talk, huh? That's okay. Not in the fucking mood to deal with this right now. He notices the pen and paper on my bed, looking back at me as he finally understands. Who are you? Ah oh, man, I'm not that forgetful, am I? I'm Monty, with an I. Remember, you guys saved me at the power plant. And then you guys came to visit me in the hospital, and I totally thought I was gonna get kidnapped, or worse. Shanked. I fucking love doing that voice. What exactly happened at the power plant? Is this related to what Theodore told me? Maybe he'll be smart enough to take the hint and leave if I ignore him. Yo, are you okay? There's a small tap on my shoulder causing me to bare my fangs in response. Oh, wait. <laughs> You're just sleepy. That's okay, take it easy. You're still recovering. You know, dude, I'm glad you woke up. I was starting to worry that you never would. Kinda spooky. You know what's crazy? 
Theo said you lost so much blood the doctors thought you were like a goner. He's been by your bedside almost the entire time. He hasn't been eating much either, now that I think about it. But it's okay, he says you're important to him and I respect that. <laughs> I wish I had someone like that. Then I wouldn't be lonely. <laughs> Something really bad must have happened to you guys, huh? Theo wouldn't tell me, but he was using a crutch just until last night. I don't know what it was, but uh, I'm glad you two are okay. I uh, also remember more about the other day, but I didn't tell Theo yet. He looked like he wasn't. He didn't look like he was in the mood to talk about anything other than you. The other day, I can tell you if you're interested. It's like a small detail I remember when I was at the power plant. This is too much. I feel like I'm going to crash any second from exhaustion trying to piece things together. That's fine too, dude. I can totally tell you later. No need to glare at me like that, though. Finally. Some peace and quiet. Hey. Speaking of which, you don't happen to know where he went, right? He sighs as I continue to glare at him. Well, I guess I'll wait for him to come back. Suffering. Hey, you want to hear a funny story while we wait? I do. I don't think Rue wants to, but I do. <laughs> I have so much fun doing Monty's voice. I have, I have not had this much fun in years. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. No. You know, like, recently, there was this cool thing I saw when I went swimming. I roll my eyes and let out a painful groan as I realize there's no way of shaking this guy off me. Just end me. <laughs> Aw, I want to hear the story. Man, I thought I was getting better at this, but I'm still not used to the hospital vibes. I force that thought aside, trying to think through Rue's situation instead. I'm glad he's awake, but if he has some kind of amnesia, then what does this mean? What happens next? I hope it's nothing serious. Maybe some food will do him some good. As I slowly navigate my usual path toward the food court, my pace tempered by my recovering wound, I can't help but notice the closed doors ahead in the hallway. Back to the Theo, baby! Ah! Odd, it's blocked. Did something happen? Peering through the opening, I spot a group of nurses and doctors on the other side frantically pushing someone into a room. Looks like I'm taking a detour. I think there's another food court on the fifth floor that should be closer. Thankfully, it doesn't take me long to find the other set of elevators. Eventually, I'm able to get my bearings and locate the other food court, after wandering the halls for a good ten minutes. Now, what to get? Crap, I should have asked what kind of stuff Rue likes to eat. Then again, he probably wouldn't have remembered anyway. Maybe I'll line up at that sandwich shop over there. Can't go wrong with those if it's as busy as it looks. As I join the line, I naturally reach into my pocket for my phone, but remember I had smashed it into pieces nights ago. It feels so weird not to have my phone around. I know I'm on vacation, so I hope no one has been looking for me. Especially since I'm nowhere near the tech convention at this point. The line's long, but it, quickly, but it moves quickly, and soon it's my turn. I glance at the menu, then at the cashier. Small mouse behind the counter who's barely able to keep up with the rush. Hi! Hi, how can I help you? Huh? Hi, how can I help you? I'm still unsure of what the best thing to order is. Hi, can I get... Uh, why are there so many choices? Rue's not a picky eater, right? He didn't seem like one before. Do people with amnesia like the same foods as before? Uh, why is my brain freezing up at a time like this? Oh god, what voice do I want to give him? Monty already made sound like a flaming homosexual. Do I want to make him sound like Orlando? Because there's a difference. There's a flaming homosexual and then there's Orlando. Oh god, the temptation to make him another Orlando. The temptation is real. I so bad want to make him another Orlando. <laughs> but he's hot! Why? 
Why are you hot? Why is he hot? Okay, I need to come up with a voice for him. I need to come up with a voice for him. He's obviously around the same height as Rue. I'm pretty sure he's around the same height as Rue. So his voice would naturally be a little lower. But at the same time, the taller someone is, then their voice can also be a little higher. Add to that, he's a little pretty, so his voice is probably a little higher, and he takes care of himself. Hmm. How bitchy do I want him to sound? How bitchy do I want him to sound? Because this decides whether or not I'm going to make him sound like Orlando or Rue. Because it's one or the other with him. Oh wait, combination of the two combination of the two hey buddy i turn around to see a hostile looking tiger glaring at me clearly pissed we don't goth all day pick something already some of us goth places to that does not work that does not work make him sound like vulgar that's just ruse voice fuck it we don't got all day we don't got all day Pick something already. Some of us got places to go. Just pick something and go. Right? Sorry about that. Panicked, I face back to the cashier who seems unfazed. Guess they're used to this kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll just get two of the BLTs. Sorry, sir. We unfortunately ran out of bacon. Might I suggest getting the number eight on the menu? It's similar to the BLT. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Uh. What's the difference i stammer over my words and try to study the menu again unprepared for this turn of events i swear i can feel the man's glare behind me piercing down my neck what's in the nu hey you heard him just get the number eight and get out of here who cares what's in him they said it was similar so that's all that matters in fact just move out of the way i'm already fucking late hey bitch Hey, bitch! Uh-uh! Mm -mm. That is not going to fly! That is not going to fucking fly! Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, put him up! Stick him up! I'm gonna fucking throw hands! No mama's! I'm gonna throw hands with this fucker. Then he can put his hands on me and do things that'll and do things that if I say I'll get banned. The tiger cuts in front of me and throws several bills down on the counter. Hey, Mousy. Give the kid two number eights and a black cough for me, okay? Some of us are in a rush. And keep the change. I don't want it. He turns back to me and gives me a look I can only describe as hateful. It's your lucky day, kid. I don't ever want to see you again. My face flushes red and I'm left speechless as I watch the man pay for my food, only to disappear after he promptly receives his coffee. I try to yell back a response, but he's already disappeared. Sad. My food eventually arrives, and as I attempt to navigate my way back, I'm still hung up with what just happened. What an asshole! At least there wasn't anybody else around to see how flustered I was. As I try to shake the embarrassment away, I notice several nurses maneuvering stretchers across the hall as I turn the corner. The hospital's a lot more active today, and I'm not sure that's a good thing. Was there an accident or something? Just as I'm about to make my way to the elevators, a tall canine nurse strides up and closes the doors along the hallway before me. Sorry. This section is now closed. Please take the side hallway around. Huh, is everything okay? They don't hear my question as they're too preoccupied handling tasks while reading something off a clipboard. This looks serious, best not to get involved. After all that, I'm finally back on Roost floor. I swear to God, this hospital's layout is like a maze and it doesn't help my discomfort for them. My mind slowly drifts back to that night and my stomach starts to wrench as I'm unable to forget the horrid sounds of the gunfire. I'd like to say I'm over it, but it also helps that- and it also helps that Roos awake, but... 
That night was insane. There's so many questions I want answered, but I guess I have to take things one at a time. Take a deep breath as I finally see Ruth's room number down the hall. I open the door as carefully as possible, trying not to wake Ru up in case he's still asleep. Hey, Ru, I'm back. Huh? Oh, God damn it. Hi, Monty. I spot Monty sitting at the back of the room, his head perking up from his phone as I enter with Ru in the bed missing. Hey, Theodore, you're back. I didn't even hear you enter. I was waiting here for you, dude. Want to talk to me about something. Huh? Where did Rue go? Oh, you know how it is. Some doctors came and kind of just took him away. What? Did they say where? I tried to ask them, but they were too busy talking with Rue for me to interrupt. I heard them mention some kind of screening room, though. All the doc told me was that. <laughs> Rue just despawned. All I remember was that there were some tests they still need to go through with him. Oh, oh, they asked me if I wanted to go along, but I waited for you to come back, so... He sniffs the air and looks at the back of my paws, his eyes lighting up. Yo, that smells amazing. I haven't eaten all morning. Matter if I have a bat? Oh, this? I got these for Rue, but since he's not here, I guess you can have one. Monty gets up and takes one of the sandwiches and starts happily munching away at it. His tail swaying from side to side. I hope there's bacon in that! I went a little too far. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I went too far. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I am sorry, Monty. I am sorry to all boars. <laughs> I went too far. I am deeply sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the chat but the chat font isn't helping. I shouldn't have said that. His tail swaying from side to side. Hey, hang on, I gotta figure out how to do that voice uh, with with food in his mouth. But I don't just want to stick something random in my mouth. I have a wireless charger that I don't use, a pencil, and a, but a metric fuck ton of hair ties. It's got a fidget cube, an Apple mouse, an LED remote, and Freddy Fazbear. Hey, you get that new wrist on that one channel, Sean. That is so good, dude. I had that like 10 the other day. Haha, <laughs> yeah. So, did you manage to find the snow leopard? I'm guessing that's why you're here so early, right? No, I was trying to look for you earlier, but something else. For something else, but it was just Rue chilling here. I don't know when he woke up, but he looked like he was gonna kill me when I walked in. And then we just started chatting about stuff until the doctor came. You know, stuff like this one time I was rock climbing and accidentally swung the cord around my neck. Oh! Oh! Yay! Monty, are you okay? R right, but what about the snow leopard? Oh, yeah! You said you saw him yesterday! I swear I did. He was in the lobby talking with someone else, but I couldn't see who or who from where I was standing. Dude, I don't know. I tried checking around the whole hospital for them, and I couldn't spot them. The closest guy I found that looked like a snow leopard was a really white cat by the facilities. I even tried asking the nice people at the front desk if any snow leopards were staying here, but they totally snowballed me. Clearly, Monty has never heard of Hippa. You sure it was them, dude? Maybe you saw that really white cat, too. A hundred percent sure. I've seen them twice already before. I don't think I could f forget their face if I wanted to at this point. Yeah, I don't know, then. Maybe this is, like, a sign that it's better if we don't see them again. What do you mean? Theo? That guy is dangerous. He wanted me to kill a dude. Look at us. We to We look totally wrecked. 
I got beaten up, and you're crippled or something, not to mention your wolf friend. Shoot, and he knows what we looked like, too. We're so done for. Yeah, yeah, speaking of your leg, didn't you say that he was the one that caused all this, that, and that, right? Something like that, but I don't really feel comfortable going over the details at the moment. Hey, that's fine, no pressure. You don't gotta tell me if you don't wanna. But I feel like we shouldn't look for this dude anymore if we can avoid it, you know? I mean... You're not wrong. I stroke my chin, thinking of potential explanations as for why the snow leopard would be here. As Monty consumes the last part of the sandwich and sits back down. Does the snow leopard know we're here? Are we being targeted or followed? I shake my head at the thought. There's no way he could know where we are. Wait, so if you didn't find him, what did you want to talk to me about? Uh huh. What's so funny? I look over and see Monty chuckling at something on his phone. Oh, you got a new phone. Yeah, that's what I want to talk to you about. I went out early and got a new phone since those jerks stole mine back at the power plant. You know, the guy at the mall gave me such a good deal, like, they gave me a whole whopping 5% off. I am so lucky. Does this game take place in the United States? Where does this game take place at? Like, what is the geographical location? I mean, I live in the United States, and I have zero frame of reference. North America by the coast. Oh, hi, Rad Canine. Hi, uh. North America by the coast. Okay, that's, so that narrows that down to two countries. The United States and Canada. I don't know. The dev is literally here. Um, it's rainy a lot. So it would likely be the East Coast. And since it's also raining, it is springtime. So I'm assuming East Coast springtime. I want to say New York. And he lives in Maine. I want to say that because that was my initial thought. That he lives in Maine. And that he's going to a convention in New York City. But I have zero frame of reference outside the United States. So I don't know. Anyways, I am making Monty a flaming homosexual. I hope you appreciate that. Uh, I don't think that's a good... Uh, never mind. Well, what were you laughing at? Dude, my phone just recommended me this news article and like, well, here, take a look for yourself. He passes me his phone and I study the screen carefully. Mayor... You always thought Monty sounded like Patrick Starr? <laughs> I don't know. I imagine him as a flaming homosexual. Like, stereotypical, flaming homosexual Brandon Rogers. That's how I picture his voice. Mayor furious at tre as trespassers dump bags of garbage on his yard. I shake my head at the absurdity of the image provided. We might actually be in Florida. There's trash scattered virtually everywhere to the point you can't even see the ground anymore. I notice Monty trying his best not to laugh as I look back at him with a forced smile. Why does everyone hate the- My eyes bounce to another headline off on the side. My brows knit with curiosity. Power plant under investigation after suspicious activity. And this was written yesterday afternoon, too. What's the matter? It's supposed to be funny. Literally everyone hates the current mayor. Did you see how much trash was in his yard? <laughs> no, no, it's not that. Did you see the article on the side? Huh? He peers over and scratches his head. Power plant. W wait, hey, it's the same one we went to. I can tell from the picture they have. So the police are finally investigating, huh? That's news to me, but that's good to hear, I guess. But this doesn't make any sense. It's been days since they left. 
why now? Hey, you know, the cops around here kind of suck. They, like, can't even give people proper speeding tickets. And I would know from experience. It's Javier. The fox's name is Javier. Fucking love Javier. Better never than late. I chuckle at Monty's slip-up and decide not to correct him, but it immediately springs a thought into my mind. If the police never do anything, so why do this investigation so late now? So what Javier said about a gang wasn't it after all? Are the police somehow involved? How do they even know? I scroll through the article, but it doesn't mention anything else that might look useful. Oh, a notification! Oh god, he uses an iPhone. Wait, no, I also use an iPhone. <laughs> he uses an iPhone. Shit. Monty grabs his phone back, tapping on the screen with a frown. Boo! Another work email. And here I thought my delivery finally arrived. Does this man have ADHD? Does this man have ADHD? He... I'm, I think Javier might be doing Netflix and chill with Magnus, but I don't know. God. And here I thought my delivery finally arrived. Oh, that's right. Why are you still here? You're practically fine now. The doctors kind of freaked out about my heart condition, so they want to triple check some stuff or some. They also said they found small amounts of some kind of chemical in my body, but as you probably know by now, I'm not the smartest when it comes to this kind of stuff. Also, the doc kept calling me cute, so I couldn't really focus. You... Oh, no, yo, I was talking about Monty. Does Monty have ADHD? And, uh, I, 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 I. Can I slap him? And then pull him into a hug? Monty, aside from Rue and Theodore, you are the best character. He's so dumb. He's the mascot. He needs to be the mascot. Just kidding. What? Cute? You mean acute? N not you, too. You. I. I... Wow. I'm gonna have to take a minute to process the bullshit. I, I gotta take a minute. To process bullshit. Cause this is... Does he... How did he pass geometry class? I... I can't even be mad at him. I can't even be mad at him, he's too dumb. And I have a soft spot for big boys. I, I got a soft spot for him. N not you, too. Wh what? I mean... And never mind. Hmm, speaking of which, I wonder what kind of tests they're performing on Rue. Hey, Monty, do you know which direction they went or where? The doctor? I don't know. They rolled him off... He rolled his bed down the hall towards the elevators. Oh, yo, I remember the doc saying something about X-ray and Rue. Crazy stuff, you know. Like, can you believe they just shoot particles in your body? Isn't that basically like a bullet? You... Oh, my God. Oh my god. I, wow. Monty, can I get some of whatever the hell you're on? Because you're clearly on the good shit. X-rays. I wonder where they do those in the hospital. Hey, I got my X-rays done earlier this week. I know where it is. But surely it's not the same place, right? The boar shrugs and smiles. I don't know. Maybe. Did you want to go on an adventure and, like, search for Rue? Yeah. Well, I'm inviting myself along. There's nothing new here, dude. It's like watching paint fry. You... Oh, my God. You... Uh, 
dry. What'd I say? Uh, now I... Rad Canine, now I understand why you imagine he sounds like Patrick Starr. And now I... Now I imagine why. Now I know why. Never mind. So that me so does that mean I'm tagging along? So does that mean I'm tagging along? I cannot do a Patrick Star. <laughs> sure thing, I don't mind. I'm actually glad the Monty is coming along. I could use his company. How? Hooray, in that case, I think we gotta go up to the uh ninth floor. Alright then. Lead the way. Okay, ta-da, we're here. We step out of the elevator with Monty immediately rushing over to the floor plans mounted on the wall. Hey, yeah, I recognize these long rectangular rooms. I was totally here the other day. The boar studies the map some more before turning around to me, his eyes beaming with excitement. I think we go that way. Or was that way? He hesitates for a second before pointing down the hall on the opposite end. Is that where they do the x-rays? I think so. We'll find Rue eventually, you know? Process of simul of stimulation. Elimination! You mean process of hey, hey, wait up! I still can't walk that fast! I managed to catch up to Monty, who's waiting for me patiently around the corner. Whoops, I forgot about your injury. I already took a look at these rooms here, and I don't think Rue's in any of them. Are you sure we got the right floor? I swear on my life, there's no doubt about it. Wait, I take that back. I'm not sure. I let out a groan and Monty nudges me on my shoulder. Hey, I found it. He's in that room. I just know it. He points to a door sign next to two large steel doors. Scanning hall. You're just guessing, aren't you? <laughs> Not completely. Well, I guess it's worth a shot. We enter the hall, which looks no different from the rest of the floor. I, we don't even know which room to go into. Maybe we should ask the staff for help. Monty laughs at me nervously, looking around for any staff. No problem, I got us into this mess, and I'm going to get us out. Look, that door's open. Let's go in and see if we can ask anybody for help. That is a terrible idea. Leads the way, knocking on the door before poking his head in. Hello, any staff inside? Oh! A slender-looking tiger sits by the corner, watching us carefully as Monty surveys the room. There's no one here besides her. Hi there! State your affiliation and who sent you to. Oh, sorry, miss. What do you mean? I already told you, people. I'm not currently accepting interviews at this time. I would kindly request all journalists and reporters to attend the meeting later this week. Journalists? Oh, no, we're not any of that. I glance over at Monty, nodding up and down with a dumb smile on his face. Sorry, we must have gotten the wrong room. I tug on Monty's shirt, cueing him to leave, but he doesn't budge. Hey, wait a second. You're that tiger lady that's running for mayor, right? What was your name again? Uh, don't tell me. Uh, door? No. It's Diana. Diana Sika. Yeah, that's it, Diana. Holy smokes, I'm a big fan. You absolutely destroyed the preliminaries with your debate and speech. You know all my friends have been talking about you. I really hope you win. Thank you. What do you say again during your interviews? This city needs action, not a clown leading charge. I never expected to see Monty fanboy this hard, especially not over someone running for mayor. That's correct. Wait, what's someone like you doing in a place like this? I give Monty a look as I'm taken aback by his bluntness. We really shouldn't be asking her that. It's probably something personal. Er, oops, you're right. Sorry about all this. We'll be on our way now. It's quite alright. It's nothing compared to the questions the media have been barraging me with. It's just a checkup on my health. You're not sick, are you? Who's gonna kick Castleton's ass if you step down? I don't plan on stepping down that easily. That being said, I hope I can get your support for the upcoming elections later this month. You bet you're the only candidate that cares about the people. Kinda makes you think what the hell is going on with our government. Fantastic. Her gaze locks onto mine, expecting some kind of response from me as well. Oh, I'm just visiting. I'm not from here, but I hope your campaign goes well. I uh heard about how you liked the current mayor is how liked the current mayor is by several people already. 
Yes, isn't he just a wonderful leader? I'd rather not speak about his current impacts, but I do think the current leadership is good for one thing, though. Oh? His ability to unite the city through his idiocy. Monty suddenly burst into laughter with Diana and I staring at him, waiting for him to collect his composure. Anyway, I'd love to continue this chat, but I need to make an important phone call. Right, sorry to disturb you. Nonsense, it's always a pleasure to converse and hear what the community is thinking. I believe that what that's what makes a good leader, wouldn't you agree? The boar gnaws his head in fervent agreement. Yep! We exchange short goodbye waves, and Monty tugs on my sleeves as soon as we're back in the hallway. Dude, can you believe we met Diane of all people? Like, what are the chances? I can't believe it either. Maybe you're just lucky with this kind of stuff. Sounds like she's popular with the people. Yeah, you know it. She just, she kind of just came out of nowhere, but we're all glad she's trying to make change. What kind of changes? Well, first off, the fact that she wants to get Kalston out of office is already crazy, you know? No, no one's been able to come close in the past few years because those stupid com companies funding and lobbying. But somehow, man, Diana's got even more support and managed to win some of Kalston's supporters over. Heh. <laughs> I guess I'll do it. She's going to invest in improving the self-sustainability of the city and give us money back. What does that mean? Honestly, I kind of forgot, but all I know is she's projected to win. Hmm, it does make me think, though. What? About why she's here. Nobody would, no one would be taking x-rays for just a normal checkup. Usually it's just a blood test or something, right? Wait, you're right. I don't know, maybe she's getting special treatment because she's a politician, right? She didn't look sick to me. Maybe that could be it. But... Back to finding Rue. Already ahead of you on that, dude. Oh, wait, what are you planning on doing? He makes a mad sprint down the hallway, peering into every single door he passes by. Hang on, hang on. I gotta do the whole thing. Hang on. Let me just... This is a terrible idea. Never do this at home, kids. And it's staff around! Oh, God. oh fuck! Almost fell. Ow. Except not really. I almost fell. Bro knows no bounds. He doesn't. He is a himbo. He is a dumbass. But we love him for that. Hello? I'm regretting this already. I'm going to die from secondhand embarrassment. Thankfully, a staff member shows up almost immediately. I don't think they're impressed by Monty's performance. It takes me a bit to walk over with the staff leaving as soon as I'm within earshot. Well, what did they say? Uh, they told me to shut it out and kicked out. Whoops. And we're also on the wrong floor with two double whoops. This is they do mainly blood test MRIs here. But I thought you said this was the floor they did x-rays. It is! I got my x-rays on this floor. Or was it the one below? Hey man, I don't know. The hospital looks all the same to me. It's all in the it's all the same direction every it's all every direction I took. I can't be upset at him with his pleading eyes like that, especially since I'm not a fan of hospitals either. Yeah, you're right, it does, doesn't it? I glance around and the hostile colors and the smells start to trigger the uneasy feelings I've been trying to suppress. Okay, let's just go downstairs. Fucking love Monty. Hey, you know, this was the floor where I got my x-rays done. You're sure this time, right? One million percent. If Ren's doing the same scans I did, he's probably around the corner in that hallway there. The boar leads the way and my mind begins to wander as I do my best to follow. Here's hoping Rue's okay. Well, here we are. He motions to a set of doors that look the same as any other on this floor. I take a peek through the glass and notice it's a sort of waiting room. We make our way in and I make a beeline towards the receptionist, a tall elk working the counter. I was wondering if... Take a seat and be seated. I glance at the ticketing machine the elk is pointing at. His face still glued to the monitor. Oh no, I'm not a patient here. I'm just wondering if someone I know... I said... Take a seat, take a number, and be seated. 
Uh, yo, what's going on? We need a ticket now. Yeah, but we're in all patience here. Why do we need a number? Let me handle this. I gotcha. The boar slams his pawns on the counter and peers over the counter directly at the monitor the elk is looking at. Hey, do you know if there's a wolf named, uh, Rue? A wolf named Rue currently getting x-rayed or something? Yelk ignores Monty's inquiry and continues tapping away on the computer. Hey, you're not even doing any work. You're just looking up a bunch of silly graphs and numbers. Sir, please be seated. Hey, how do you make that little line jump so high on that red graph? Sir... If you two don't cooperate, I'm going to have to call security and escort your men out. Yeah, well, I'm going to be telling your manager you're playing with lines instead of working there. Practically have to yank on Monty's belt to pull him back over the counter as he starts to ramble on with the staff. Excuse me, what seems to be the problem here? Look over and see a coyote doctor clad in a crisp white coat, his gaze studying us carefully. Is there a Rue here currently getting x-rayed? Oh, so your buddy is playing on the computer instead of working. The doctor looks at Monty confused before he nods back at me. Yes, there is a Rue here. In fact, I was just finishing up his scans. Oh, how is he? Can we visit him? Where's friends? No, I'm afraid not at this moment. His lower spine has been misaligned, and several of his bones and ribs have been shattered, as well as a damaged liver and right lung. There's also several bullets still lodged in his lower upper torso that we'll need to remove. Oh, God, that's awful! Well, it's not all bad. Luckily, most of the bullets seem to have missed his vitals by a hair. Though it seems like he has developed an acute case of retrograde amnesia. This is probably due to the blood loss he suffered. But in his condition, although non-life-threatening, needs to be properly treated, so we'll be moving him to the other building for surgery and proper treatment. It's truly a miracle that he's alive. He should be able to make a full recovery within time, but the amnesia could take an indefinite amount of time. Now, if you'll excuse me. The coyote nods at the two of us before disappearing into another door down the hall. Want to stop it for the ad? Want to break from the ads? Do you know ads dance? Nah. Sad. And we're back. The coyote nods at the two of us before disappearing into another door down the hall. I feel a soft, gentle pat on my shoulder. Hey, man, it'll be okay. You heard the doc? He'll be okay. Everything's fine. Yeah. No. No, it's not. Everything's not fine. I slowly make my way out of the waiting area and back into the hallway. I can hear Monty following behind me. What? Why not? They said he'll make a full recovery. Yeah, but he's got amnesia now. Oh, is that why he was acting so weird earlier? That would have explained it. It should have been me. Man, you? What are you saying, dude? I didn't tell you the full truth. It's more complicated than just the snow leopard. I think we were being targeted by someone else. Really? It must be. It happened so quick, but they suddenly stopped. The car shot at us and then drove away. We were following after that snow leopard. But the thing that bothers me the most is that the alleyway we were in wasn't connected to anything important. It's as if they knew exactly where we were, and it wouldn't make any sense otherwise. Wait. Oh, wait. You didn't mention that to me. So the drive-by was caused by someone else? Yeah. And I think they were targeting the Snow Leopard. That's why I wanted you to look for them. For answers. Sorry, I didn't feel comfortable mentioning it. So then, what now? You're not thinking of doing something crazy, are you? I think... I clutch my fists tightly and stare at Monty, my emotions a mix of terror and anger. I want to figure out who did this. For everyone's sake, especially Rue. It's the least I can do. Whoa, and you're going to do this all alone? Probably not. I sighed how ambitious my plan is. I'm not even going to be around for much longer. How am I supposed to help when I get back home? I would offer to help, but I don't really know how useful I'd be, man. You'd be useful for emotional support. It seems so dangerous, dude, but I'm also kind of curious about who could be behind all this. Wait, those people who shot you were after the Snow Leopard, then you think they're after Blackout? Because Snowy was their leader, some right? That's a possibility. Yo, that's so suspect. I wish I was better at figuring out this kind of stuff. I don't even know where to start. Hey, that's right. Wasn't there a tiny little fox about following you guys before? He looked so smart with his glasses. Where is he? Ah, Javier. I only saw him briefly after we arrived at the hospital. He couldn't stay long, especially not when he heard what happened to Rue. 
Yeah, I was going to start meeting up with Javier. If anyone can figure things out, it has to be him. Yeah! I think I'm feeling well enough to be discharged this afternoon. So I think I'll head over to Javier's place. I've been so out of the loop for the past couple of days. Wait, yo! Mind if I tag along as well? There's like some stuff I wanted to ask the Fox too. Oh? You know, how you guys gave me a business card. Well, I was going to call it, but I, it kind of just disappeared. I think I lost it. Whoops. Yeah, sure, I don't see why not. Great, I kind of want to pick his brain about blackout in the truck I saw. Truck? Yeah, didn't you guys see it when you were at the power plant? It was like this huge, long 18-wheeler that people were throwing stuff in like it was the end of the world when I got there. What? We didn't see anything like that, and you're just remembering this now. The boar sheepishly nods back. Well, I wanted to tell you about it earlier, but you weren't in the mood to hear it. Alright, do you remember what kind of stuff they were loading in? It looked like heavy equipment and a bunch of huge cardboard boxes. There was like this dude that accidentally dropped one of the boxes and then the and then snow went feral and snapped at him. Huh. I don't know, man, but yeah, let's head over to the fox place later. I'm kind of sick and tired of the hospital air anyway. You sure? Didn't you say the doctors wanted to check over some stuff with you? Yeah, but it's not like I'll be gone for the whole day. I'll be back before they notice I'm even gone. Well, if you say so. I guess I wouldn't mind having some company with me. Hooray! Oof! Without warning, he envelops me in his strong embrace, pulling me close against his broad chest. I blush as I realize just how warm his body is against mine. Yo, if we're gonna be out, I need to get my stuff. I'll meet you in the lobby in an hour. Sure. See you then. The board disappears from sight, leaving me brewing in my thoughts. I let out a sigh, my mind wandering back to the night of the incident. Lawrence. Glad he showed up when he did, but what the hell was he thinking just ditching us like that? Thinking back to how Rue's been describing Lawrence, there's a small part of me that's suddenly suspicious of him. It's too untimely for him to just show up like that. Maybe he's involved somehow. Then again, he had no reason to save us if that's true. Regardless, I have some questions lined up for him. And then there's Javier. Hope he's pieced things together in these past couple of days. No idea how it went with Magnus, but... He looked so frantic when he came to visit. But I'm glad he managed to tell me his address before he left. I stare at the ground with paws clenching tightly. I don't know what's been happening these past days, but I'm going to get answers one way or another. I'm going to figure this whole thing out if it's the last thing I do. For him. Ah! Everyone vote for Rue for March Madness. Everyone vote for Rue. I may have ulterior motives. <laughs> Vote for him. Anyways. Stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.